Hey, my name's John. I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about why are ER visits so long? Non-admitted patients in the United States spend on average 141 minutes from the time they arrive to the ER until they're actually discharged from the hospital. And that's the median time by the CDC 2017. And across the US, a typical ER visit can take you anywhere from two to three hours. But why is that? I'm gonna tell you guys four main reasons why your ER visits are so long. The first reason why your ER visit's taking so long is because there's just so many intricate moving parts. The ER is like a well-oiled machine. I'm gonna run through a typical level two or three encounter. Say you come to the ER with abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and you just feel miserable. So first you're arriving to the ER by your car. You talk to registration, you tell them what's going on. You get to be seen by a triage nurse, and we put you back into a bed. From there, you're going to see the doctor or the ER provider, like a nurse practitioner or a PA. They're going to come up with a plan and decide what needs to be done for your visit. Maybe they want to get IV access and some lab work. Maybe they want to look into getting a CAT scan of your belly. They'll order some IV medications for you, some IV fluids while you wait in the meantime. You go to and from CT, the radiologist looks at your CAT scan and they're saying that you have diverticulitis. It's not severe enough that you need to actually stay in the hospital. They send you home with some oral antibiotics and some antiemetics and they give you somebody to follow up with. And in that span of that ER visit, you're probably in the ER for a good two to three hours. But there are so many places in between where even a little delay can extend that out to three, four, five hours or longer. For example, say you get to the hospital and you're not put back into a room right away. You have to wait half an hour, an hour. You're a really hard stick and the nurse has to spend half an hour to get IV access on you. What if there's a long line for the CAT scan? So at any one moment, there can be three or four different people who need the CT machine. Some of them are more emergent or they've arrived before you, so they're in line ahead of you. That could delay you half an hour, an hour. What if the lab's bombarded and they don't run your lab work or the lab work that they have needs to be redrawn and redone? Say that we need to talk to other specialists or doctors and get in touch with them. And, you know, in the end, it takes us half an hour to actually speak to the GI doc for whatever reason. And by the time you add up all of these little pieces, a shorter ER stay can balloon up in terms of time. The second reason you're waiting so long in the ER is because of patient volume. Between 1995 and 2017, there's been a 50% increase in the number of ER visits in the United States. More and more people are coming to the ER for their medical care. But the ER is almost like a roadway. At night, a major highway, you could drive effortlessly on the road, right? But by the time you hit the rush hour traffic in the morning or in the afternoon, you're clogged up with congestion and everything's backed up because capacity throughout a day fluctuates a lot. And it's the same thing with an ER. Another example could be airports. Airports get bombarded with people around Thanksgiving or Christmas because everybody wants to travel back home. So an ER fluctuates not only with the time of day, but the day of the week and the time of the year. Lots of patients will come into the ER on a Monday because something's been bothering them all weekend and they finally want to get it looked at. Likewise, a lot of people will come to the ER on a Friday because they call up their family doctor who might not have an appointment for them and they're not gonna be in the office all weekend. So you best go to the ER and get checked out, right? In terms of time of day, a lot of people tend to come to the ER after lunch, after school, or after work. And then if it's say like a Sunday, people will come to the ER just after church. And holidays, they definitely vary, but say for instance Christmas, a lot of people will try to avoid the ER on Christmas day, they wanna spend the day with their family, but then the day after Christmas, it's free game. Everybody will come in with their ailments that have been bothering them on Christmas Day. Um, it's just the matter of the fact that people don't want to come in on a holiday. The exception kind of being Fourth of July or New Year's, where you get all these firework injuries and things like that that people have to come in for. The bad thing about ER timing is you can't really time when you're having an emergency. If you're having an emergency and you need emergency care, Go to the ER. Don't delay and be like, well, it's just after work and the ER is going to be busy, so I shouldn't go in. 
No, go in and get your medical care. If it's an emergency, you'll be seen sooner rather than later. This brings me on to the next point, reason number three, which is the hospital's actual capacity. When it does actually get busy, hospitals do tend to plan for higher volume. They'll bring on more nurses, they'll bring on more staff, and some hospitals are able to handle a higher load better than others. Is the hospital that you're going to the only one hospital in a 25, 30 mile radius? Or are there multiple facilities that could better handle, you know, a big load of patients at once? Is the hospital that you're going to in a rural, small town area, or is it in a large urban area? Because they say that metropolitan areas tend to have a bit longer wait time. And then is it a huge hospital with 100 ER beds and multiple units and all the specialists? Or are you going to a smaller hospital that has 12 beds or 20 beds and only a few staff on hand? Because if you have a smaller hospital, you do get to a point where there's just no beds, there's no hall beds, there's nowhere to put all the extra people. And so people pile up in the waiting room. The fourth and last reason why your ER stay is taking so long is due to the acuity and what's going on in the department at any one time. See, say that a hospital ER is staffed by two doctors and one PA at that particular time of day. If the one doctor is busy dealing with an intubated critical patient and the PA has two lac repairs and an abscess on their plate, then that effectively means that only one physician is out there seeing the extra patients at that time. Just one critical patient or a handful of uncooperative patients can pull from a lot of resources and take away time from other patients. So there's the high acuity stuff, but then there's also the fact that lower acuity things, like say you have a cough, an ankle sprain, you know, um, a runny nose, an earache, you're probably going to be waiting longer in the ER than if you have severe chest pain or something else going on that might be a life-threatening emergency. This is because all ER complaints are triaged prior to coming back to our facility. So some ERs have adapted and they've built in essentially urgent cares in the ER called the fast track where one or two providers will be seeing all of the lower acuity patients and that way hopefully you know, in and out of the facility in 15, 20, 30 minutes, under an hour. So between the fact that the ER is a well-oiled machine, every facility is in a different location and has a different capacity, the fact that ER volume is very unpredictable and fluctuates throughout the day, however, a lot of people tend to all use the same resource at the same time. And then lastly, depending on the patient complaint, when you combine all of these factors, this is how you know, an ER visit in the United States is taking, you know, two to three hours, and then in some states it's even taking longer. Guys, I hope this video helped highlight some of the reasons why your ER care is taking a long time. If you like videos like these, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm making more ER related videos in addition to physician assistant videos. If you have any comments, leave them down below. I want to know. I mean, what's the longest amount of time you've been in an ER for? And how do you think the ERs could get better at seeing patients more quickly? Guys, stay safe out there. Have a great day.